my name is Shona in case you don't know and welcome back to another video. In today's video I'm going to be doing another book tag because I've been obsessed with watching them recently. The one that I'll be doing today is the simple book tag. I'm not sure who the creator is so if you know the creator please leave the creator's information down in the comments so that I can add their links to my videos so that people can find them if they want to. The first question of this tag is how do you organize your bookshelves? Well I have three bookshelves. I have a tall bookshelf on my back which you can't see right now. On that bookshelf I have a lot of my favorite books, not all of them because I have a ton of favorite books. And I have some books that have left a lasting impression on me which include a lot of books by YouTubers and just their story of how they like came to be a good YouTuber and stuff like that. And then on the big bookshelf which you can sort of see in the background, in that bookshelf on the bottom is just random miscellaneous stuff but on the top is books that I haven't read yet. The first section of the shelf goes through a series that I started but haven't finished yet and it's arranged by the author's last name in alphabetical order. After that I have books that are based on a show but they aren't like a series necessarily all the time. So examples are Star Wars so there's I have some books based off of Star Wars movies and I have those together but they're from like different series and then they're all put together just for the sake of having them there and I have like some for the Hunger Games as well but they aren't the actual Hunger Games books if that makes any sense and those are arranged alphabetically by the first letter of the series name so Star Wars is S, Hunger Games is H, etc etc etc. After that I have books that I have multiple of in the series and I have not started the series. These are arranged by the author's last name, the first letter of the author's last name in alphabetical order again. And then after that I have books that I have only one book in the series and then it's arranged alphabetical by author's last name again. The last section on this bookshelf is standalone books that are arranged by the author's last name in alphabetical order again. And then in my closet, on the top of my closet, on the top shelf, I have books that I have read. I sort of just stack them. I have some books stacked like this in there and some books stacked like this. It's just like a temporary placeholder because I don't have enough space for another bookshelf in my room. And then scattered throughout my favorites bookshelf and this to be read bookshelf in the back I have big books. Now these big books mostly are Harry Potter books and they're books that are just like way bigger than a normal book and they most of the time accompany like the Harry Potter movies so they can sometimes be as big as like this big and then I don't know where to put them so I just sort of shove them where there's space. And then whenever I get a new book I just sort of shove it at the top above the books that I have left to read and then when it gets too full I go and rearrange them again if that makes any sense. I just spent such a long time describing my bookshelves, whoops. What advice would you give to other book reviewers? You need to decide whether you're going to be leaving bad reviews if you do read a book that you don't like or if you're only going to do positive reviews. I know a lot of reviewers who personally don't like giving negative reviews, which is completely fine. Just figure out what you want to do and what you're most comfortable with. Don't feel pressured to leave negative views if they make you uncomfortable. Do whatever rating system you want to on Goodreads. You can make it so you don't have a star rating if you don't feel comfortable reading that book or if you don't feel comfortable with negative reviews. I'm just putting that out there because I've seen that there's a clear divide between people who do star ratings and leave negative ratings and people who don't do star ratings and leave only positive ratings and I think you just sort of need to decide what your brand is and what you feel comfortable doing. Yeah, that's basically all I have for advice because I'm not the greatest book reviewer as most of you probably know. What are your favorite books? I have a huge stack of books right here below the filming area that I just grabbed so I'm going to be quickly showing you all of these and describing them very briefly. So first up is Cloaked in Shadow by Ben Alderson. Ben Alderson was a booktuber and he is just an overall great person. And to summarize this book really briefly, it is Shapeshifters meets Avatar The Last Airbender. It is a fantasy novel with lots of LGBTQ plus representation in it and I absolutely love the series. This is the first book. If I have any other series in this book, I'll just be showing the first book in the series because some of these series are long, even though this one only has like three books and a novella in it. Next up is Embrace Your Weird by Felicia Day. I have this book signed. Let me see if I can open the page. Bam. She came to my city and that's where I got it signed. This is a self-help book that inspires you to be creative. It really helped me find creative outlets and it really made me want to be creative and find more things to do with my time because most of my time is just spent laying at home on my phone since I'm chronically ill and this book inspired me to find more creative things to do. I really want to get into scrapbooking because of this book. Also this book has some tips on anxiety and it's a workbook so look see you have to write in it so I really recommend getting the physical book instead of doing an ebook or an audiobook and if you do the ebook or audiobook you need to have some sort of journal nearby to help you. This is an example of one of the activities. 
you can't even see that well. But it was basically combine two words and make it into one thing, so I made a mana tree. This is another series. I love the Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children series. This series follows kids with superpowers and it has antique photos in the series that sort of aid in the story and make the story a tiny bit creepy. It is by Ransom Riggs. The series does start off not the greatest. The first book was enjoyable but not my favorite. The second book was not good very much at all. I didn't even use proper words there. But the last three books in the series have been amazing so far and I absolutely love this series and the characters. We Hunt the Flame by Hafsa Faisal is one of my favorite books. I did give it 4 to 5 stars instead of 5 out of 5 stars, but the characters have really stuck with me and I have just been remembering the series a lot recently. So even though it is a bit slow at the start and it wasn't a 5 star read for me, it still is one of my favorite books. Next up we have The Legend series by Mary Lou. I still have not read the newest book, Rebel, but I am planning on reading it soon, but The Legend series is definitely one of my favorites. I don't remember it that well, which is bad. But hopefully I'll reread the series soon so I can remember the plot a little better. But I think I remember it enough to read Rebel without rereading the series, but I don't remember it enough to give you a good synopsis of the series right now. And then we of course have the Harry Potter series. This is the Hufflepuff hardback house edition because I love the house edition so much even though I only have Philosopher's Stone, I don't have the other books that have come out in house editions. The Harry Potter series everybody knows so I don't need to go into detail and describe it. And I'm in the minority when I say this, but I loved Curse of Child as well. Some people say that the Harry Potter series is their favorite, but not Curse of Child. I love Curse of Child, so I'm including this one in the video too. The Maze Runner series is one of my favorite series. This series is by James Dashner. The first book follows some teenage boys who are trapped in a maze and have to try to figure out how to get out. And it is a dystopian society that is sort of a little scary in the later books, but I really enjoyed the series and I really enjoyed the characters. The characters are really what drove the book for me because the first book at least was extremely confusing. And then The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins is obviously one of my favorite books. I feel like everyone knows what The Hunger Games is about, but just in case you don't, it's about teenagers who have to go into an arena and fight and there's districts and that's how the society split up and it's a dystopian society. And then Article 5 by Kristen Simmons is another one of my favorite books. This is one of my favorite series and I don't have the cover for this book because I found it in a secondhand bookstore and this book is signed as well. Article 5 is another dystopian society that I need to reread the series because I don't remember it that well but I remember really enjoying it and it has a beautiful romance in it. I feel like I should have narrowed down my favorite books a little more, but I didn't. I'm sorry about that. It's making this video really long. So The Sun is Also a Star is one of my favorite books. It follows Natasha and Daniel, who are two people who end up having a, like, coincidental, they didn't mean to run into each other meetup, and a romance brews from that. I was a little scared to read it, but it is beautiful, and I honestly read it because... Charles Melton was in the movie, even though I haven't seen the movie yet. And this book is by Nicola Yoon. I prefer this book to Everything Everything because Everything Everything had a problematic ending. And then The Divergent series by Veronica Roth is another one of my favorite series. Again, I feel like everyone knows what this book is about, but just in case you don't, it's a dystopian society where it is split into five factions and each faction is based on a personality trait, like erudite is intelligence, abnegation is selflessness, dauntless is bravery. So yeah. I have two more books for my favorite books. The next one is Five Feet Apart by Rachel Lippincott, Mickey Daughtry, and Tobias E. Conus? I don't know how to pronounce that. The main reason why I wanted to read this book is because Cole Sprouse, who's from Riverdale, is in the movie, and then a book club that I'm in read the book. So I was like, might as well read it, and it was on sale when I got it too, as you can see by the sticker. Five Feet Apart is a romance that follows two patients with cystic fibrosis. It is very emotional, but it is really good. And my last favorite book is The Deceivers by Kristen Simmons, and this is the series, or all the books around the series so far, because there's only two books in the series out so far. I got this one signed as well. Bam. And this book follows a school for scam artists, and Bryn, the main character, comes from a family who doesn't have that much money, and she doesn't like her mom's boyfriend. I think it's her boyfriend. I think they aren't married. So the school is her second chance at getting a better future. Where do you like to read? I honestly only like to read in the bath, which I know some people are scared to read in the bath. Just hold your book really firmly. And then I also like to read by my bed, which is back there, and I just lean my back against my bed. I have this thing where I don't like reading books when there's a shadow on the book, and I found that if I sit on my floor with my back against my bed and my light, my overhead light turned on, which isn't on right now, I can read the book without any shadows interfering. 
it's just a weird thing that I have and I can't figure out why but for the meantime I'm just trying to avoid any shadows when I'm reading. What is your favorite book cover? My favorite book cover is the Crimes of Grindelwald book cover by J.K. Rowling. This is the screenplay so it's not like a novel type book. It's beautiful inside the book too but I absolutely love the cover and I remember when the cover was first revealed I think I was at school so when the cover was first revealed I immediately started examining it and trying to figure it out. I can't show you on camera very well but so my middle finger that's the philosopher's stone and I was like holy crap does that mean that Nicholas Flamel is going to be in this movie and then there is this lock right here that says NF on it and I was like oh, freaking Nicholas Flamel is going to be in this movie and I was freaking out so hard and I still remember that day and it was surreal to be able to figure that out before the movie came out and I was just like oh my freaking gosh so yeah I absolutely love this cover and I love the movie too even though some people aren't a huge fan of this movie what book vlogger would you like to meet in real life so I have two for this but one of them might not really count so I'm a very awkward person and I have brain fog a lot so I stumble over my words so I'm always a little scared of meeting celebrities in real life I really want to meet Mermaid Keeley I saw her at LeakyCon last year but I didn't say hi because I'd only seen like some of her videos and I wasn't quite subscribed yet so I was like I shouldn't ask her for a photo because that would be weird. But since then we've sort of became friends and she's really nice and I would love to meet her in person but I'd probably be so awkward that I'd be like I'm bad at coming up with things to say so I like your videos and thank you for being a nice person and I'd probably give her like a book deposit her a gift card or something because I'm so awkward like that. And then the other book vlogger I want to meet has been making videos recently but I really want to meet Ben Alderson and I showed his book earlier in this video. I really want to meet Ben because the second book in his series really helped me learn to accept who I am. I've touched on this briefly like online but I'm not going to touch it in this video but there's a part of me that I had a really hard time accepting and yeah when I read Bound in Night which is the second book I found that I could accept this part of myself even more than what I could before I read the book so yeah. So that's all for the simple book tag. There wasn't that many questions, but I had a lot of favorite books, so this video is pretty long and I'm sorry about that. Feel free to subscribe to me if you haven't already, and also feel free to go check out all my other social media if you want to, since this is a book video. If you like books, feel free to follow me on Goodreads. Sometimes I don't do video reviews, sometimes I just do written reviews. If I do a written review, it will be on my Goodreads or my Bookstagram instead of on here, but I do like to do a good video review on here every once in a while. I hope everyone's having a great month and I will see all of you later. Bye! Now the challenge of putting all these books back. Yikes. Let's go do this.